Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we conclude the book of Hosea. We're going through the Bible for the fourth time, and we are in Hosea chapter 13, verse 9 today. So get your Bible if you can. Open it up to Hosea chapter 13. Study the whole Bible with me. All four series are archived at thebibleversebyverse.com. That's the Bible, verse by verse dot com. All you need to bring is your Bible, and all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, excuse me. O oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. But in me is thine help. Literally, God is saying, Israel, you brought this mess on yourself. You have destroyed yourself. You have ruined yourself with your sin. Because that's what he's been talking about. We alone are responsible for the guilt of our sin. And for the punishment that follows that sin, and also the negative consequences that inevitably catch up to sin as well. We are completely and totally responsible. If we go to hell, it's our fault. Just like Israel's destruction was her fault. It's always that way. It doesn't help to blame someone else or something else. It doesn't say, well, this is, it doesn't pay to say, well, this is the reason, as modern evangelicals like to emphasize, this is the reason that I commit sin. Who cares what the reason is? You committed sin, you shouldn't have. That's the only thing that matters. Now repent. Because you can sit around and talk sophisticatedly about, oh, how this is the psychological reason. And we'll do this workbook to figure it out. And all you're doing is spinning your wheels and kicking up dust for absolutely nothing. You ought to be studying the Word of God, repenting of your sin, and strengthen yourself through the Word of God so that you don't do it anymore because it doesn't matter how sophisticated your talk is. You're still going to pay for your sin. There's still going to be consequences. So just shut your yap and start living for Jesus. And you preachers who perpetuate that kind of nonsensical talk and so-called teaching, you'll answer to God, oh, you sound so, you sound so intellectual, you know. But all you're doing is hiding behind a veneer of intellectualism while you're not doing your people any good. Ten. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save ye in all thy cities? And thy judges, of whom thou saidest, give me a king and princes. Yeah, Israel had wanted a human king instead of God. They wanted to be like all the other nations. So God allowed them to go with their rebellion. And their sin contained its punishment because the kings led them astray. 11. I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. God gives people a free will, you know. If we want to sin, he allows it. But there's going to be punishment as well. 12. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hidden. When the time for punishment arrives, God does not have to go search for the evidence that there was sin that needs to be punished. The evidence is stored up, packaged, and ready for viewing. 13. The sorrows of a traveling travailing woman shall come upon him he is an unwise son for he should not 
stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. Israel was helpless to avoid her destruction. She was as helpless as a woman about to give birth who can't deliver the child, and so it dies. 14. I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. I will redeem them from death, O death. I will be thy plagues, O Sheol. I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hidden from thine eyes. Israel will be destroyed. But through the cross of Christ, individual Jews can receive eternal life through Jesus Christ and consequently defeat death and eternal hell. 15. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall, he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. The east wind that causes destruction refers to the political and military powerhouse of Assyria, who was God's instrument of destruction to punish the northern kingdom. 16. Samaria shall become desolate. And remember, Samaria refers to that northern kingdom. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. The whole ugly scenario is laid out by God because sin is ugly. War is cruel today, and it certainly was cruel back in those days. And as usual, the innocent seem to suffer the most. And that's one reason God wanted his people to repent. God didn't want them to experience the horrible consequences of their sin. Chapter 14, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. God appeals to them to repent again. He's warning them what's going to happen. It doesn't have to happen. All they have to do is repent. Their sin has made life bad, and it's going to get much worse unless they reverse things by their repentance. Two, take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. There were no animal sacrifices that could cover their willful rebellion against God. That's not going to cut it. Israel's only hope was to come to God with humility and repentance and confession of sin. So again, three, Assyria shall not save us. They were looking to Assyria to save them. But Assyria is going to be the one who attacks them. God's going to take the very thing that they trusted in for security after they turned their back on him and use it to destroy them. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. They're going to learn their lesson. Eventually, it's going to be a hard lesson, but they're going to learn their lesson about idolatry and turning away from God. For I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. God's anger will stop burning once Israel truly repents and is sorry for their sins. Five, I will be as the dew unto Israel. 
he shall grow like the lily and cast forth his roots like Lebanon. Like dew refreshes plants, God will refresh Israel, and he will make them happy again, if they turn away from their sin, that is. So he's laying out the two choices that they have and the consequences. One is just horrendous if they choose to go on sinning. The other is wonderful if they choose to repent. Nothing has changed. We're still faced with the same choices and the same basic consequences today. Six, his branches shall spread and his beauty shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive like the grain and grow like the vine. The scent of it shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Israel will no longer be chaff blown in the wind. They will be firm and fruitful. They will be nice to be around. People who live for God and experience his salvation are nice to be around. Even if you don't follow their God, even if you don't follow Almighty God yourself, you, it's still nice to be around somebody who does because they're trustworthy, they're good, they're decent human beings. Unless, of course, you're depraved and it bothers you. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. God is the one who nourishes and gives strength to our body and soul. And Israel's going to wake up. I mean, it's going to be a long, hard rope because they're not taking the easy way. They're not going to repent. So God's going to dig the sin out of them. Dig deep. Nine, who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall on them. Each of us must choose obedience or rebellion. If we obey, we walk. If we rebel, we stumble. It's not always smooth sailing for the obedient, not all the time, no. But it's always better than the consequences of rebellion. Certainly, in the long run, that's absolutely true. And even in the short term. The way of the wicked is hard, the Bible says. Well, thank you for studying the book of Hosea with me. And next time we'll be in the book of Joel. And I hope you can join me then. In the meantime, study the whole Bible with me, verse by verse, from Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages. Choose, click, and listen. That's all you have to do. Bring your Bible. That's all you need. Again, that's at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you want to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me. That will make you a part of this ministry. Pray for the Word of God that I teach. That'll make you a part of this ministry. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also will make you a part of this ministry. See you next time in the book of Job here on Scripture. Joel, I should say, here on Scripture, verse by verse.